The iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have plenty of shiny new features, including upgraded cameras and an always-on display. But the most notable new feature is the fact that Apple slightly lowered the notch, which debuted on the iPhone 10, and now calls it the Dynamic Island and included some new software features that are worth knowing. I'm Jason Cipriani, and in this ZDNet how-to video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use the Dynamic Island and what all it can do. All right, so I don't know if you can, you'll can you be able to see this, but that's the Dynamic Island, right? That little black pill looking thing there, which is probably what it would have been called if Apple didn't give it a marketing name in Dynamic Island. But if you turn the phone just right and you have one of these, you can actually see there's two different cameras there. I don't, it's not gonna show, show up on this, I don't think. Uh, there are two cameras there, and then Apple uses software to draw a bigger black pill design around it to hide the camera so they're not very visible all the time. But instead of just making it so that the dynamic island lives there and you're hiding the cameras, Apple added some software features. And I'll be honest, with the introduction of iOS 16 and the launch of the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, I thought the dynamic island was cool, but kind of gimmicky at the same time. You could do some pretty cool stuff with it, but with the release of iOS 16.1 and live activities, which allows uh, developers to create some pretty cool interactions. I'll go over here in a minute. I think the Dynamic Island has a lot of potential that I'm actually kind of excited about now. All right, so you can see that's where Dynamic Island lives. It's that little pill-shaped area there. And when you're not doing anything with an app that interacts with the Dynamic Island, it, it just is there. It's, it's a pill or a notch by a different name. But when you do something like I don't know, open the music app, start playing music. Now watch this, as I swipe up, the app disappears into the top of the phone. And what happens is now you have the album art and then a little sound wave over here to show that music is being played. And if you have really good eyes, I don't. You could even see the album art to see what song is being played if you're not listening to it. I actually have the volume all the way down right now so we don't get a copyright strike. So this is kind of helpful if I knew what album art this was. All right, so to interact with anything that is alive and living in the dynamic island, you have two options. One, you can long press to bring up what looks like a widget of sorts that allows you to interact with, in this case, the Apple Music app. I can play, pause, rewind, fast forward in the track, also tap on the AirPlay icon to uh, send the music to a nearby speaker. And you see as it changes songs, uh, the album art reflects that as well, both in the popped out version and in the Dynamic Island live view, we'll call it that. So a long press opens up that option, but if I tap on it, it takes me right back to the music app. And in this instance, it takes me to the lyrics. All right, so you're not limited to just one app being active in the Dynamic Island. The other app you can use, or there's actually quite a few apps you can use, but another app that is easy to use in a demonstration is the timer. So I've started a five minute timer and as I minimize it, you see it pops right back up into Dynamic Island and now it's split. So you can see here, it's split. I have the album art on one side and I have the timer icon on the other. And you can interact with these in the same way. So you can long press on the timer icon to pop out the little small widget and show you where the timer is at on the countdown and tap anywhere on the screen to do away with that. Same thing with the music. Basics, right? So if you have phone calls, if you're on FaceTime, if you have maps and navigation going, all of those apps will show up in Dynamic Island. They're all system apps from Apple, right now at least, that are showing up there. But there's more you can do with this, and that is with the launch of iOS 16.1 on Monday, October 24th, you now have the ability to download apps that developers have built what's called live activities into. So with live activities, what you can see here on my Pro Max is two examples of live activities that were built into iOS 16 in the first place. Uh, but with 16.1, developers can now take advantage of this and I'll show you a demonstration of an app that is already out that has that option as well here in a second. So I can interact, I can do whatever I want with Timer or uh, the music app that I could play, I could pause 
all of that works well, right? So those are a quick example of like live activities. And then once I come back into the phone, hey, look, uh, they go up into the dynamic island. That's fun. So the thinking behind live activities is that apps like Uber is a popular example that Apple likes to use or Lyft. When you summon a car, or, you know, start a ride, it will give you live updates as your driver gets closer to you. So you're not standing there holding open your phone with the or holding your phone with the Lyft or Uber app open as you watch your car get close. You can actually just glance at your screen or uh, in the dynamic island and see exactly where your driver is at. Sports scores. Another prime example and awesome use case for this. You could see live time, play updates, score updates, all that right on your lock screen or in the dynamic island. Uh, there's a lot of apps, utility apps, tr fitness tracking, uh, good habit development apps that you could track different stuff in dynamic island, which I get, but at the same time, it, it feels like it's a, li a little bit much, but. All right, so I'm actually filming this a few days before iOS 16.1 is officially launched, which means not a lot of apps have been updated to support live activities. Pruton is a recipe app that allows you to add recipes from any URL. You just copy and paste it into the app, it imports it, and then it walks you through cooking that recipe. And it actually looks pretty cool. I just discovered this literally in the last five minutes, and it may end up being an app I use all the time. All right, so. Let's show you what live activities looks like with the dynamic island for third party apps. All right, so now I have this recipe imported. I am gonna go back to step one. I've already tapped on the button to begin cooking the recipe. And now I'm gonna close out, not close out. I am going to minimize the app and you can see that the app goes to live in the dynamic island where the live activity currently is. If I long press on it, look at that steps for or the instructions for the current step i'm on as well as shortcuts to start timers within the crouton app or go to the next step which then opens the app and once i minimize it it goes back to the dynamic island for whatever reason it's not transitioning to the next step in the dynamic island which is a little frustrating but probably a bug that needs to be worked out by the developer here's the other aspect of live activities on any iPhone, and that is that it now lives on your lock screen. So I don't have to look at Dynamic Island or go back into the app, all I have to do is wake my phone, there's the step I'm currently on, even with always on display, it is visible, and then if I hit next, it goes to step two, next again, it opens the app. That's not how I would expect it to work, but you get a good idea of what's going on here and how to use it. All right, so there's one last thing I need to show you for Dynamic Island, and that is that you can actually use swipe gestures within the island to close out certain live activities or to uh, hide all of them together if you want. So as you can see now, the Crouton live activity as well as the music app are currently active. And if I swipe towards the middle, I switch to the music live activity. If I swipe again, the dynamic island goes back to its blank pill-like state. Nothing fancy going on there. Now, I've had a ton of trouble getting this to work properly, but the way it should work and the way I've seen it work in other videos is if you swipe out, it brings up now back to the music live activity and see now it's just going back to the pill. But I did see, or I have seen, there we go, two swipes to the right. I think that's a Tinder joke, but I'm not on Tinder, so I don't know. And it brought up both live activities. Man, this felt like a really disjointed video, but it kind of is representative of the way Dynamic Island works. And it's confusing, and it's, it's the crux of my problem with Dynamic Island. It shouldn't be this hard to use a feature that looks so simple and cool. And when it, when it works, it's really cool but it's also really frustrating. Why can't I go to the next step in that recipe? Why does stuff not work all the time? It just, anyways, I hope you learned a lot about Dynamic Island. I'm Jason Cipriani with ZDNet. Make sure to check out ZDNet.com for more tech tips that hopefully come across better than this one or the latest tech news.